Hey friends, I'm Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today I'm going to take you on a garden tour. I know the season's early, especially up here in upstate New York, but I wanna show you what we have planted because we're almost completely done. And I wanna share with you what I'm excited about this season. So I've got my handy Rue apron on here. I've been wearing this thing religiously. Um, I even put my phone in the pockets and seeds that I have to direct sow. So I'm going to take you through a few of the different gardens that we have going on. We have three four by eight raised beds, an old horse trough that we're using for an herb bed. We have, we have four 50 foot back to Eden no-till beds, one Ruth stout bed, we have a 30 by 50 plot that's kind of a mix of everything that we had actually tilled last year. So this year we're trying to transition it over to being a no-till bed. And then we have this bad boy right here, our hookah culture bed. So that pretty much sums up what we have going on as far as gardens go. Doesn't include our permaculture orchard and food forest that we're starting this year. I will be sharing that in another video. So I'm going to take you over to the raised beds that we have. Um, they're small, but they are mighty. Last year, actually the raised beds were very unproductive. Everything was stunted in growth and nothing did super well. I had hypothesized that the raised beds didn't do well last year because of compost that hadn't broken down quite enough. Nothing just did that well. Nothing suffered, but it was all very slow. This year, it's insane. Things are growing like crazy in these raised beds and I really think it's because the compost has had more time to break down and the plants are absorbing those nutrients better. So let me show you what we have going on here. My favorite part about these raised beds is the volunteers and plants that overwintered in this space. So let me show you one of the plants that I'm talking about. See that cabbage right there? That overwintered. And I really wasn't expecting anything to overwinter, but it came back so strong and it has grown faster than any of the other cabbages that I planted in the ground this year. So I'm hoping that it'll give us a nice cabbage head, even if all the other cabbages don't. And I also have a bunch of volunteer lettuce plants. So we grew that kind of lettuce, not even in that bed last year. It's actually in the bed next to it. It was right over there where you can see the other volunteer. And the seeds must have gone whoo over here. And now we have tons of lettuce. I'm gonna have to pause for a minute and wait for these loud ones to be quiet. So be back in a second. So in here you can see cabbage. I have all this butter lettuce. I have a couple calendula plants. Some marigolds, celery that I just planted yesterday, which is why it's looking a little pale. Um, and then I have my secret gardener seed challenge plants. I replanted some of this old trough with some parsley that I started from seed that's looking really good. Um, some parsley that I purchased at start, some curly parsley cilantro that I started from seed in here, and that's coming up really nice. Um, dill that reseeded itself and is growing everywhere. And some chives that came back from last year, so they're just starting to flower. I love chive flowers. Something hilarious that Chris noticed the other day that I was really excited to share with you guys. Do you see that? Let me zoom in for you. This dill is growing out the side <laughs> in a tiny hole in the trough. I love that. And there's another one. Gosh, this stuff is ferocious. So this is more of that butter lettuce that reseeded itself. I'm gonna pull some of it up today for dinner. Um, some dill that came on over from the trough. I have 
carrots that I seeded a few weeks back. They're all germinating really nicely. Um, I thinned them out mostly and it rained so they got spread everywhere. And then beets that I transplanted pretty recently but they're they're doing great. So they're the beets. Um, raspberries that we put here temporarily but we're gonna move. I just ran out of time. And some kale that overwintered and went to seed. So I'm gonna let it go to seed and then I'm gonna save the seeds because I'm obsessed with curly kale. And this last bed is all pretty much onions. Um, I have some chard that I just transplanted, which is why it's looking really floppy. Um, it's doing just fine. It just needs to kind of develop a thicker stalk. And then here, a ground cherry. This one I transplanted, I put it in here because I wanted to try the ground cherries in a bunch of different locations. So those are our three raised beds and then we have the herb trough and the other little random bin that I found. So these three guys are actually hardy kiwi plants. We're gonna move them. Um, there's two females and a male. Kiwis require a male female for pollination, but they're doing great. They were dormant when we got them, and as you can see, they are no longer dormant. So we will be moving them into the food forest when we have an idea of where. So let's head over to the large garden, and I'm gonna walk you through the beds and show you guys what we have planted there. Now, a lot of stuff hasn't come up yet or isn't established yet, but I'll tell you about where we're planting what and what has come up and the things that we transplanted and all that good stuff. And then after that, I'll show you what we have going on in the hugo culture bed, which is doing awesome so far. Here is the garden. So let us run away as fast as we can. No looking back, I'll hold your hand because we're free to be all that we can be. No one's stopping us but this is our potato and tomato bed. I have potatoes on each side. On this side, we bought some seed potatoes, five or six different kinds. Right here, we have 54 different kinds of tomatoes. Um, this is most of our tomatoes here. Uh, we have a couple plants that I just got from a friend, and then the rest I started from seed. Right before we left for our trip from Maine, I looked outside and I was like, I'm gonna go check on something real quick and Chris is like uh what's going on and I come out and sure enough my tomatoes had been dug up I couldn't see the nine tomatoes when I looked out the window I couldn't see the ones that I had planted an egg under so I had a feeling something had dug them up so when I walked outside and saw the damage uh you know I was a little bummed but luckily the roots were still mostly intact because they were in the little grow bags so I replanted them um, and they're okay. Yeah, like this one right here. You can see like it's doing just fine. How cool are these guys? These are the Napa Chardonnay blush and they've got purple leaves. So interesting. At first I thought they were damaged and then I realized that that's just the way they look. My tomato bed has a lot of different kinds of tomatoes. I've got some paste tomatoes. I've got cherry tomatoes slicer tomatoes and yeah almost all of them I started from seed. Tomatoes are looking good. This bed right here is going to be my Back to Eden Three Sisters bed. So as you can see heavily mulched with wood chips, no till, the Back to Eden style and the Three Sisters is planting corn, pole beans, and squash together. I have five mounds where I've planted three different kinds of corn. I planted glass gem corn, sweet corn, and then a blue corn. Moving on to the front, I have a couple of puny okra plants. I have a couple of ground cherry plants, some tomatillos. I've been picking off the blossoms and picking off the lower leaves as they kind of die back. And they're doing okay. I planted them before we got a lot of wind, so they're just kind of bouncing back from that right now. Three more ground cherry plants. So all the way around here we have onions and they're doing awesome. Um, in the middle I have three artichoke plants and they're big as you can tell. Their inner leaves are coming in beautifully. Outer leaves they yellow which is normal. 
I'm also growing mushrooms. Just kidding, not really. Uh, that's just the effect of the Back to Eden. So you have calendula coming in here. We've got some California poppies, uh, nasturtium. This is a different kind of poppy. And then in this bed right here, I have lentils that are growing right here on the outside. They're growing really slow, so I don't know if we're gonna be really successful with them this year, but we'll just have to see. And then in the middle, I have radishes. Between the radishes, I have some dahlia plants. Um, they're tubers, so they're planted below the surface and then they're gonna come up. And then on this side, I have more lentils and radishes, and then I have some beets also interwoven with the radishes. These three rows right here, they're all peanuts. So I have two different kinds of peanuts. And one's a purple peanut and one is a standard peanut that you'll see. This trellis right here is planted with pole beans. So I have noodle beans and a couple different other kinds of pole beans that I planted. I noticed that this side germinated really well and this side didn't. So I'm actually gonna come in here and direct sow a few more pole beans on this side just to make sure that we get fullness on both ends. So this area right here, um, from here all the way down, is kind of my pride and joy right now because all of our peppers are planted here. So we have a lot of different kinds of peppers plants. Most of them are bell peppers because then we can chop them up, freeze them, um, and do all kinds of things with them throughout the year. And then we have also some hot peppers. We have a couple habanero plants that I purchased because none of my habaneros germinated after three times. A few jalapeno plants. I also purchased those because I didn't buy any jalapeno seeds. Banana peppers, paprika peppers. We have more of the Chinese five color peppers, Tabasco peppers, corbachi peppers, arroz con pollo peppers. So I'm excited to share with you guys as these guys grow. And not every year here is a good pepper year because we don't get a very, very hot summer. So we'll see. This trellis, I planted a watermelon on both sides. One side is one kind of watermelon and the other side is another kind. They're both from Fruition Seeds and they are adapted to this region. So I'm excited about that. This trellis is more melons. I believe more watermelon here and also some cantaloupe. I'm just going to tell you what are on these two trellises real quick. So I planted butternut squash, the mini kind, the honey nut, and acorn squash on this trellis right here. And then on this trellis, I planted two different kinds of small pumpkins or winter squash. So they're little personal size sugar pie pumpkins and things of that nature. In this bed right here, all the way down is beans, lots of different beans. You can see the black beans have all pretty much germinated and they're all coming up all along here. And then I have some fava beans that I planted garbanzo beans and soybean so the row that goes all the way down that you see there is a row of soybean and the rest of the beans i planted using blocks instead of doing rows because they don't need very much space apart and i'm trying to utilize as much space as we can right over here you can see the two areas of soil i have some summer squash growing now my cabbages my cabbages, friends. These cabbages were all pretty much awful. They were awful. They looked so rough, and I thought for sure that they would not make it. But they're making a comeback. Every single one, every single one is still living and has new leaves coming in. They may be a little late. They may not produce great heads this year, but they've inspired me by their willingness to live. I have some broccoli right in here. Um, I actually noticed that they're already producing tiny little heads, but that's not a good sign because they're, they're too little to be producing heads that we could eat. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So my favorite thing lately is to go sit on this old rickety bench. I have dreams of finding vintage chairs and cute tables, but for now I enjoy just having a spot to sit. This old bench we found on the side of the road for free and it may not look pretty but it serves a purpose giving me time to reflect and look out at the garden and all the things that we've accomplished. Now my favorite bed of all of the beds is this perennial herb garden, tea garden, and flower bed. 
I've actually always really enjoyed loose leaf tea. The idea of being able to make tea all winter long from the garden and then having those same herbs come back year after year, providing us with more and more tea as well as culinary uses was really exciting to me. Here's some peppermint in this pot and in here I have a curry plant. This curry plant doesn't produce like the curry you'd have at the store, but it smells exactly like curry, which is why they call it curry plant. And you can use it for all kinds of things in the kitchen, but I wish you guys could smell it because it smells exactly like a curry plant. I would grow it for the scent alone. This plant right here is a stevia plant, and this you can actually steep with herbal tea to sweeten it naturally. Um, it's a zero calorie natural sweetener, and it's the leaves are sweet. Wow, super, super sweet. I love stevia. I have an oregano plant, lemon thyme, lavenders right here, some different flowers, calendula, zinnia. I planted two more dahlia tubers here. Those will come up and I'll share those with you guys. A rosemary plant, uh, a chia plant. They'll produce a really pretty flower. They'll get really tall and then you can save the seeds. But I don't think I'm growing enough to save the seeds. Here I've got basil. I also got a couple transplants from my friend of holy basil and cinnamon basil. I direct seeded two little blocks of four different kinds of basil. Purple basil, large leaf basil, holy basil, and something else I don't remember. I've got sorrel, which is a perennial herb that tastes kind of like spinach. Some more dahlias because I'm a little obsessed with dahlias right now. This plant I was really excited about. I was at work and I just sold some plants and so I had some cash in my pocket, which is not common for me. And I went downstairs to the farmer's market and there was someone selling plants and this was a perennial herb. And I was really excited because he was telling me that this is bee balm. It's called raspberry wine bee balm. And after the Boston Tea Party, indigenous people in this area taught the settlers in Western New York how to use this to make tea. So I was like, I need this in my tea garden. So I bought it, it was $13 and it was definitely worth it. And it produces a beautiful dark pink purple flower. Here I've got chocolate cosmos. It's one of my sister's favorite flowers. So I thought I had to buy it when I saw it sold at a farmer's market. This is a lavender plant hardy for this region and it produces a beautiful white flower so I thought that was really cool I've never seen lavender that produces a white flower behind me we've got another lavender plant so lavender everywhere more dahlia tubers buried that haven't come up yet and some lemon balm lemon balm is a perennial it's gonna keep coming back great for tea great for putting in your water really amazing scent and flavor and then last but not least is tricolor sage it's white, green, and pink. Really pretty. So I have a couple more things that I still need to plant in this herb garden. And even though I don't have them in the ground yet, I wanted to tell you guys what will be going in. So I started these guys from, from seed. They've been in the house and then they've been hardening off. So I have sage, I have chamomile, um, some mint right here, which only um, two of them germinated, which is fine. Chives which had spotty germination as well. Yarrow, which is amazing for herb gardens, straw flower, and echinacea. So all of these things will be going in here throughout the bed as well. All along here, I have strawberries. The strawberries right around me were planted last year and they're producing so many little berries. I'm so excited about it. We should have berries in like a week or so. All the little berries and they're still putting off blossoms. I planted the rest of my artichokes in this area because I thought that this would be a good space for it. <laughs> so I have the four more artichokes, some more strawberries that we planted this year. Along this welded wire, we have peas. They're grabbing onto the wire. So far, they have not produced any blossoms. So we're just waiting on them and hopefully they'll produce lots of peas in just a little bit. Along here, I have beets that I direct seeded all down the first row right here and then the second row is all radishes and they should be ready in the next couple of weeks. Some broccoli, cabbage, dinosaur kale which is coming up fine, more broccoli, cauliflower. We have kale right in here 
it's all doing pretty good. It took a long time to grow because of the ground being so saturated. Um, and then this is our garlic. So we planted the garlic in late October, early November, and it's just been doing great this whole time. So we should have some really good garlic here around late July, early August. This is weed crazy. I've given up on this because this was tilled last year and we're not tilling it again. So what we're gonna do in the fall is once the weeds die back, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cover this with cardboard or some kind of barrier and a lot of wood chips to kill off the weeds. Uh, we didn't get around to it this year and I wish we would have because the weeds grow so fast. And then this is the rest of my tomatoes. I don't know, like 30 or so tomatoes here. All different kinds again, a lot of different paste tomatoes. And you can see they're doing, they're doing really well. So they're happy. I had tried planting the ones in the end over there earlier and using grow cover and I learned my lesson. It's not worth it. They don't grow faster. Their growth is stunted and they end up having more damage. And then back here, as you can see, I really need to mulch this area. I haven't gotten around to it yet. And then this is quinoa. Huga culture bed is looking fantastic. I talked about it in another video, the Huga culture video, as appropriate. It's doing really well so far. Not a lot of issues. I'm sure the issues that we will run into will be later once the roots are starting to hit wood potentially. But for now, things are doing really well. So as I've talked about before, we've got onions all the way around the perimeter. Um, we've got different kinds of lettuces. I planted a couple of basil that I actually propagated inside. I need to water those in a little more. Just yesterday, I went and planted um, some beets all around. So some beets are right here, some beets right here, and then they go all the way around. All different kinds of flowers, annual flowers like these zinnias. Um, kale is spread pretty much all over this bed. You can see two different kinds of kale. We have some parsley that I planted right here. I even planted a tomato plant just to see how it would do. A ground cherry and an eggplant with some more soil on top. And then germinating on the very top of the mound, I have cucumbers. I have three different kinds of summer squashes. So zucchini, two different kinds of zucchini and two other kinds of summer squash. Um, they're all along the top here. And I might thin them out if I need to. We have Egyptian walking onions that I planted here. You can see they're about to flower. And I actually planted some peanuts, but they haven't come up yet, just like the other ones haven't. So that's it. If you were hoping to see the food forest and permaculture orchard in this video, I'm so sorry that it wasn't included. Join me for Monday's video where I will give you a full tour of our permaculture orchard and food forest and what we have going on there. I can't wait to share that with you guys. 